Hello and welcome back to QGIS for Archaeology. In this lesson we discuss the basics of geospatial data. This includes the common data models, or types, of data, followed by a quick tour of common tools used to explore geospatial data in QGIS. Then we'll talk about the various ways of adding data. We'll cover coordinate reference systems and how to transfer data sets between various coordinates. Finally, we'll round out the lesson with a discussion of web mapping services, measuring distances, and creating spatial bookmarks. As always, there are timestamps available in the description so you can jump from section to section. Okay, let's talk about GIS data models. These are the file formats that you find geospatial data within in a GIS environment. And there are many types, but we're concerned with two primary ones. So the first type we'll talk about are vector data. And these are used to represent points, lines, and polygons. And so you can see here that the majority of these files are empty. There's no data attached to the majority of locations. Also, you'll see that these are representing different geometry types, right? So points are single vertices that represent a point with a single coordinate attached to it. Lines are strings of vertices that are connected to one another. And then polygons are, again, a string of vertices that create a closed shape. And so here we can already see these three data types being combined to produce what looks like a map. And if you're familiar with the Gainesville, Florida area, you'll recognize this map. Now the other type of data model that you'll find in a GIS environment are raster data. And so a raster data is what we call a continuous data set. In other words, all across a raster's extent, you'll find values. Now that could be a zero value or even a null value, but there's a value assigned there. Unlike vector, where if I was exploring outside of the areas where there's specific data, it's not a no value or a zero value, it's the absence of data completely. That's not the case with a raster data set. And so these represent things like rainfall, or in this case, elevation. Any kind of data that is continuous, or in other words, has value all the way across Okay, let's take a moment and talk about spatial references, coordinate systems, and the like. All coordinate reference systems begin with an ellipse, which describes the generalized shape of Earth. These ellipsoids are never perfect, and that's why a variety of them exist, to create more accuracy at the local scale. This is related to a datum, which defines the origin and orientation of the coordinate axes. Datums anchor coordinates to the Earth. Now, a coordinate reference system, or CRS, is used to represent the locations of features within a common mathematical representation of an area. There are two types of coordinate systems encountered when working with GIS. A geographic coordinate system represents the world in three dimensions and provides a more accurate model of the Earth's surface because it's three-dimensional. Common examples include latitude and longitude often expressed as either degrees, minutes, seconds, or decimal degrees. There are numerous examples, several of which we'll explore in upcoming tutorials. Now, a projected coordinate system, that's the second type of coordinate reference system, represents the world in two dimensions. And so, of course, projected coordinate systems are what we are typically wanting to use in GIS operations and they support most forms of geospatial analysis. And these forms of analysis rely on them because they rely on linear measurements. Now, when you're working with data in a GIS environment, oftentimes you'll need to reproject data. In other words, you'll need to take it out of one coordinate system into another. So if we're looking here at the cemetery center points, I'll turn off all the other data sets so you can see this. And then I open the properties pop-up window we can actually navigate to the information tab and we can see the coordinate reference system. So let's go ahead and click OK to exit out of this. Now I'll show you how to project this data into a new coordinate system. And the way we do that is we basically resave the data, give it a new name and a new coordinate system. So when you have the save vector layer as pop-up window here, the first thing you want to do is make sure you have the correct format we're going to use Esri shape files here. Now we need to choose a file name so you can navigate sort of anywhere you want to and just label it whatever cemeteries. And then you want to make sure that the coordinate system is set to what you want to use. And you have a handy 
way to search this here. Whoops, I mistyped. NA, I want an NAD83 coordinate system. And so here's one that I've used recently. You can see it's sort of represented. If I kept typing here, NAD UTM 17 North and scrolled around down here, I can find the one I want right here. And you can see there's a variety of these. So looking up EPSG values is something you can do uh, online and get more information about this. I typically choose the first one because this, this works for me very well here. So click OK. And then if I click OK again with Add Save File to Map, what this will do is it will create a new layer. And that's a new shape file also on your hard drive that is also now uh, that is also now projected into a new coordinate system. And so we may see information like this up here. Used a ballpark transform. That means that we have data sets of different coordinate systems in our QGIS document. Oftentimes that's fine. If you get a message like this, it's yellow, it's not red, it's just letting you know something happened. If I was wanting to use this data to do more advanced forms of spatial analysis, I would want to project all of the data into the same projected coordinate system. Okay, let's talk about base maps. Base maps are anything that you use to sort of orient the points or lines or polygons or any data you're using in a larger spatial context. So here I'm using this raster data that represents Alachua County elevation here in the state of Florida as my base map. Now, of course, there are many other ways to add base maps. The most convenient way is to use the Quick Map Services plugin. Use the plugins drop down menu, select manage and install plugins. This will update for a moment and then we can search for any plugin that we want. Quick Map Services, I already have it installed. If you do not, you would use a button down here that will say install plugin. And then if you want to add the remainder or all of these different base map services, refer to that introductory video for more details on how to do that. Okay, as we wrap up this tutorial, I'd like to talk about two useful tools. So the first one is the measure tool. And you access this with the measure line tool. You can also measure areas and angles and it works in basically the same way. So if I want to measure the distance from this cemetery to this one, I can click and do that. And you can see the first distance is locked in and I'm still actively measuring. Now this is useful, but as you can see, I've sort of clicked randomly. So we can actually lock in accuracy of our measurements by going to view toolbars, snapping toolbar. And this will likely pop up as a free floating toolbar. You can drag it and lock it to your user interface and then click the button labeled enable snapping. So if I close the measurement tool and reaccess it, as I move in, you can see my cursor locks to vertices and this will produce a much more accurate measurement. So we can see here the distance between these two corners is a little over a kilometer. So let's go ahead and close out that tool, go back to our pan tool and talk about the final useful tool in this tutorial. So the final tool I'd like to talk about is the Spatial Bookmarks Manager. And you access this by going to View, Panels, Spatial Bookmarks Manager. And sometimes this will not activate initially. Just click one of these tools. It's probably a bug on my machine. I apologize for that. Go ahead and add a new spatial bookmark. And the reason we would do this is, say I like this view and I want to return to this specific view again and again. I'll just label it Gainesville really quickly just to give it a name because we're in North Gainesville here. And so if I've moved off the map and I can't reposition or recreate that last view, and I maybe close this, I can't keep backing up my views, then I can just click, double click on this bookmark and it'll bring me back to the exact location. So that's a really useful tool if you want to create and save particular views in QGIS. Okay, so that's all we have for our first tutorial. As always, links to location of data are down in the description. I've also included a link to a USGS website with loads of geospatial data sources. So you can go find some interesting data, start making maps, and doing some basic geospatial stuff. 
Uh, we'll discuss many of these in other tutorials, of course, different data sets, different tools. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to get those future updates. Until next time, keep mapping the past.